Today we're looking at a fascinating topic in Emacs, one that I've been wanting to cover for quite a long time, advanced Emacs motions. Let's start with the universal argument. The universal argument in Emacs is invoked by Control U. And if you invoke Control U just by itself, it does the same as if you had typed Control U4. In other words, it does the same as if you had provided it with a numeric argument. So let's position our mouse there and let's hit Control U and hit Alt F. And you'll see that what it does is it moves four forward. The number four is just an arbitrary number that is associated with the command. Numeric arguments let you pass a numeric argument to a command. And because these are so useful, they are bound to a multitude of keys. You can use either the control key plus the numbers, or you can use meta key plus the numbers. So for instance, Alt-1 would do the same as control u one and so on. Let me give an example. Let's say we want to move forward 10 characters. We could hit control u 10 control F. Alternatively, we could hit Alt-1, Alt-0, control F, and we get the same result. So control 0 through to control 9 does the same as control Alt-0 through to control Alt-9, which does the same as Alt-0 through to Alt-9. So there's a number of different ways of doing the same thing when you invoke a numeric argument. This is to make it easy for you to jump around and to do the things that you want to do. Let's say, for instance, that I want to move four lines down. I can invoke Alt-4, Control-N. And that gives you quite a lot of flexibility if you know exactly how many movements you want to make. The limitation, of course, with using numeric arguments is that it requires that you do a bit of counting. Now, that's not intuitive necessarily, but a numeric argument can be very, very helpful if, for instance, uh, you are good at quick calculations. So let's say, for instance, we want to delete these six lines. It would be Control U6, Control K. It's also useful to know the negative argument. It's useful for modifying text that you have just typed. The negative argument is bound to Alt minus, Control minus, and Control Alt minus. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say I am typing a word. And I decide now that I want to act on the word that I've just typed. I can invoke Alt minus and then change that to lowercase. Now, let's look at the basic movement in Emacs before we get to the more complicated movement. Emacs does support the navigation keys, the arrow keys, the page up, down. It's rather a better idea to create good habits from the start. And that is, instead of using your arrow keys to go up and down, left and right, you use the Control N, Control P, Control F, Control B keys. That keeps your hands in the same sort of vicinity on the keyboard, and it can be very, very useful. And you'll find that your editing is a lot quicker if you do that. Obviously, these commands pertain to single character movements. Now, you'll notice I'm scrolling the screen up as well. And that's because I have bound the control up and down arrows to scroll forward and to scroll back. I do tend to like to scroll, and it's not a feature that's built in by default within Emacs. Then we have movement by word, Alt F and Alt B, move forward and back a word. Just note that what we consider a word to be is important. A word in prose differs from a word in code. You can customize how Emacs understands a word. I have felt that the default behavior is fine for me, and I stick with that. Then we have movement by sentence, and you can also define what a sentence is in Emacs. If you prefer 
working with smaller regions of text, for instance, if you want Emacs to treat a comma or a colon or a semicolon as parts of a sentence, then you could customize your .emacs accordingly. Alt E, Alt A. Then we've got movement by paragraph. The paragraph keys are bound to the less than helpful control down and control up by default. I generally don't move by paragraphs and that's why I've bound those keys to scroll up and scroll down. Another set of keys that I've never found particularly useful is control V to scroll down one screen and Alt V to scroll up one screen. And what I prefer to do is I prefer to bind control V and Alt V in such a way that they jump to headings and my custom commands follow which you can copy and add to your .emacs and I have customized these so that they work both in markdown mode and in org mode and I've already been putting this into practice for the demonstration of this video if I hit Control V you'll notice I go to the next heading Alt V up then very helpful keys Alt left angle bracket and Alt right angle bracket will take you to the beginning and the end of the buffer respectively. Now the nice thing about these commands is that when you invoke them they leave mark at the originating position. So let's go to the end of the buffer. Now let's say we want to go back to the place where we were. It would be Control U, Control Space and we are exactly back where we were. Then we have movement by symbolic expression, which is a particular movement that pertains to code, and it's particularly helpful, obviously, with Emacs Lisp. This command gives you the ability to move by balanced expression or pairs. Common examples are quotes and brackets. Movement by S expression is similar to movement by character and word, only the difference is the prefix, which is Control alt Now, if you move forward a word, it's Alt-F. If you would move back a word, it's Alt-B. When you move forward a symbolic expression, it's Control alt f and Control alt b Let's just give you an example here. Control alt f take us to the end. And that can easily be combined with Control x e which then evaluates the expression. Control Alt B takes us back. Now combined with these keystrokes are another two which are important. Control Alt D which moves one into a list. So let's invoke that. Control Alt D and you'll notice that we have moved into the list and then Control Alt U which moves us out of the list. Now we come to the real gold which really makes Emacs movement keys very, very special. And that is Control S, which is iSearch, which moves forward in the buffer, and Control R, which moves backwards in the buffer. Control Alt S and Control Alt R will give you the same thing, except that instead of typing a literal expression, you would type a regular expression. Control S, Control W. In other words, if you invoke Control S to do your search and immediately after invoke Control W, this allows you to select a word for searching and it's equivalent to Vim's shift asterisk. Control S, Control W, Control S. Control S, Alt Y searches for text copied to the clipboard. So let's select this text. Let's copy it to the clipboard, Alt W. Now let's do Control S, Alt Y, and you'll notice what it does is it yanks the copied text into iSearch, and then you can continue to search for any other instances using Control S. Control S, Alt C, that allows you to search for a term and provides for a case sensitive search. So let's hit Control S, Alt C. And let's look for 
provides. Now, you say, well, I thought this was a video on moving about and you showing me how to find things in the buffer. This is where it really gets interesting in Emacs, when you combine Control S with other movement keys. So let's say, for instance, I'm in my buffer and I'm not having access to my mouse or I don't want to use my mouse, I simply want to use my keyboard. Let's uh, say, for instance, that we're not going to use our mouse and we want to put our cursor on the word especially. Now, with this kind of movement, we need to think a little bit. Before we just try and get there, we need to think, what is the quickest way to that word especially from where I am currently situated in the buffer? Let's do Control S and type ESP. Now, before we type anything else, let's know that once you perform an eye search in a buffer, you can thereafter make full utilization of all of your movement keys within Emacs. Now, in this instance, the best command to use would be Alt-B, because Alt-B moves backwards a word. Now, notice what happened. We invoke Control-S, we type three characters, ESP, and then before we did anything else, we invoked a movement key, and that is great. Now, let's say we want to get back to the word combine. We could use Control-R, Alt-C, C-O, and we could just press Enter now because you'll notice where the cursor is flashing, and we're there. Another useful key is Alt-M, which allows you to move back to indentation. So let's say that we are positioned here. We don't want to go to the beginning of the line. We want to go to the beginning of the indentation. We would hit Alt-M. Alt-A would take us to the beginning of the line. Another way of moving around is to use registers and bookmarks. I'm not covering bookmarks in this video. Registers are very, very nice, particularly if you want to remember specific places in your document. So let's say that I want to remember this exact position here. I could invoke Control X, R and space, followed by any letter. Let's type B so that we can remember it mnemonically. And uh, let's do a whole lot of work and jumping around and going elsewhere, blah, blah, blah. Now we want to get back to where we were. We could hit Control X, R, J, B. And we are exactly where we want to be. The mark, I did a video on the mark, quite a lengthy video. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. And let's say, for instance, we want to select a portion of text. Now we could toggle point and mark by invoking Control X, Control X, Control G to get out of the selection. Control U, Control Space cycles the items in the mark ring. And if you set this variable set mark command repeat to pop, then to cycle the mark ring, all that you would need to do is invoke Control U, Control Space, and thereafter Control Space. You wouldn't need to keep hitting Control U. The feature which is built into Emacs, which admittedly I don't use very often, is repositioning point by invoking Alt R. And what that does essentially is that it moves the point between the top center and bottom by default of the visible window, but without actually scrolling up or down. Another useful feature, but not too well known, is goal column, which controls the vertical trajectory of cursor. It sounds like rocket science, but actually it's extremely simple. It's particularly helpful when you're working with columns. What this will do is it'll keep the cursor in a straight line. So Control X, Control N. You'll get a warning when you first invoke this command because Emacs thinks you'll get confused by it. And then you'll notice your movements will follow a straight trajectory after this. And to disable Control U, Control X, Control N. Now, when I was putting together this video, I relied on a wonderful article by Mickey Peterson on effective editing movement. 
this article can be found here. I haven't followed the article slavishly. I've also added my own thoughts and two pennies worth. One final little bit of advice when you learn movements in Emacs. Avoid the temptation to experiment too much with other text editors. When it comes to movement, to have absolute clarity as to how to proceed. Otherwise, you're going to confuse the movements with the movements in another, and that's not what you're wanting to achieve. And I guarantee you, if you take the prescriptions that I've laid out in this video and you put them into practice, you will find that you move through a buffer in Emacs at lightning speed. Take care, folks.